Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome as we come together to celebrate already this fifth Sunday of Easter. The Easter season is fast moving to a close, and we'll be celebrating the Ascension and Pentecost and the feasts after that in just a few weeks. We come before the Lord. Jesus telling us today that he is the vine and we are the branches. And at times, that vine needs to be pruned. Let's bring before the Lord those parts of our own lives that need pruning, asking him to help us so that we may grow stronger and become more faithful disciples and witnesses of his resurrection. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You will take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days... When Saul had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who spoke to him, and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. And he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists, but they were seeking to kill him. And when the brethren knew it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it was multiplied. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. You are, you are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and shall have their full. They shall praise the Lord, those who seek him. 
May their hearts live on forever and ever. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. All the earth shall remember and return to the Lord. All families of the nations worship before him. They shall worship him, all the mighty of the earth. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. You are my my praise, praise, Lord, in the the great great assembly. And my soul shall live for him, my descendants serve him. They shall tell the Lord to generations yet to come. Declare his saving justice to people yet unborn. These are the things the Lord has done. You are are my my praise, praise, Lord, Lord, in the the great great assembly. assembly. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth, and reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, If our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who keep his commandments abide in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit which he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Abide in me, and I in you, says the Lord. He who abides in me bears much fruit. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my Father is the vine dresser. Each branch of mine that bears no fruit he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If someone does not abide in me, they are cast forth as a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When my colleagues decided to divide who was going to celebrate these Masses, I can see that I was uh, down the line when it came to uh, looking at the readings. 
Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in them will bear much fruit because without me you can do nothing. I don't know about you, but I get quite confused by all this imagery uh, in the text. But let's try and unpack it a little bit and see what it is saying to us, what it is inviting us to this uh, Sunday. The account starts with the description of the father who is the vine grower. The vine grower very carefully works in the vineyard, caring for the individual branches of that vine every day. The branches that don't bear fruit are removed, and the fruit-bearing branches are very carefully pruned so that they can produce more fruit, Jesus tells us. The vine grower wants nothing more than to have a full crop and spends great time and great care in achieving that. He will do whatever is needed to achieve that end. At first glance, the text tells us that the Father spends great time and care in watching over us all. If, of course, we remain in him and his words remain in us. And then we are told we can ask for whatever we want and it will be done. But notice something else. The text, I think, also tells us something about the relationship between Jesus and his disciples. You know, many of us live in urban areas, and unless you grew up in the Western Cape, which is South Africa's wine-growing region, we, we, we find it hard to appreciate the significance of this image, the branches of this vine that have this intimate relationship, depending at all times on the vine. From my trips to the Cape here in South Africa, I've heard that vines are also very sensitive, sensitive to the weather, sensitive to the way that they are pruned and so forth. And so there needs to be this right balance between the vine and the vine grower who knows what to do. Now Jesus tells us that he is the true vine, the real vine, and that his disciples, us, are the branches. And he will help us to bear much fruit. He says, he says, if we abide in him, then we will bear much fruit. And he also tells us, apart from him, we can do nothing. This vine image of Jesus, it seems to me, is an image for Jesus of intimacy. Remember that he is talking to people who lived in and understood an agricultural society and metaphors much better than any of us in urban areas would today. And so this whole story of the vine, this whole dialogue of Jesus about the vine seems to me as an invitation to intimacy with God. It's also an image, if you think about it, of the church, a church that is intimately connected throughout the world, across cultures and across continents. Jesus, the vine, invites us or urges us to abide or to live or to make our home in him. And so the invitation to us is to ask ourselves, how do we maintain intimacy with the living God? How do we strive to be obedient in the best sense of the word to the calling that God has placed in the heart of each one of us? A calling that if we listen carefully and God has placed it there, will help us to bear much fruit. What does it mean to abide or to dwell in the vine, to be intimately attached to Jesus? Notice how, like so often, in the gospel, our relationship with the Lord is always expected to bear fruit. Fruit, we are told, for the world. Abiding in Jesus includes a number of different things. Nurturing 
a regular prayer life, being part of the life of the Christian community, the church, supporting one another, finding spaces for mutual support, having common worship together as we do. Even though at the moment we are scattered all over and not in one place, we gather together for this common worship. The sacramental life of the church. We also abide in the Lord when we study the scriptures and allow the scriptures to become part of our lives. And most importantly, when we work for the spreading of the gospel, the good news in our world. Every Eucharist that we celebrate, we are drawn into that intimate fellowship, into that vine with Jesus himself. But notice also with everybody else who is around the table of the Lord. We cannot have one and not the other. The big mistake we so often make is exactly that. It's perhaps one of the heresies of our time. We think that participating in the Eucharist is the center of everything, is the most important thing. And we don't see that flowing from that, and just as important, is our relationship with others, that which impels us to the service of others. The call to abide in Jesus, to abide in the vine, is an invitation to a personal an intimate relationship, a knowledge of Jesus himself. Not an idea about who Jesus is, but rather Jesus, the living person. We can only be in relationship with a living person, with the risen Jesus. And that's what he invites us into today. But that relationship has consequences because it invites us again into living relationships with those around us, relationships with our brothers and sisters who come around this table. But there's another image in that gospel that I want to pick up on, because it's not a nice image and yet so necessary. As soon as Jesus speaks about the vine and the branches, he speaks about the vine dresser doing two things. And both, I'm sorry to tell you, require a knife, a pruning uh, scissors. Every branch, we are told, that doesn't bear fruit, the Father removes, he cuts away. And every branch that does bear fruit, the Father prunes so that it may bear more fruit. When we come into that personal relationship with Jesus, we begin to discover a deeper call and a much bigger challenge to submit to the pruning knife, to cut out the things from our lives that don't help us, and even to cut out things that may be good in, them, in themselves and that would have the potential to develop into fruit-bearing branches, but in order that something else may flourish. Perhaps that's what at the core of what St. Ignatius of Loyola tells us. It's not the question of simply between good and bad, we cut away the bad and keep the good, but sometimes it's about cutting away the good so that the even better can grow. Pruning might mean letting go of one good thing for a greater good. But pruning is also a painful process. It's a form of loss. The vine dresser is never more intimately involved than when, yielding that, than when wielding that pruning knife, a painful experience that leads to something being left behind. And so as disciples of Jesus, we are invited to be dependent on our relationship with him, his inner presence and activity in our lives, one that renews and invites us to greater depths of love and commitment. True disciples can only be effective if they are grafted on like a vine is grafted on to Jesus himself, allowing his very presence to pulsate through 
our minds and our hearts to be the heartbeat of who we are and what we do every day. I want to invite you to take time in the week ahead to consider the invitation the Lord extends to us today. First of all, to a deeper, more intimate relationship with Jesus. As He and the Father are one, the vine and the branches, we're invited into that intimate relationship. How will you go about doing that? The second invitation, a commitment to community, to be active members of the Christian community so that we can bear fruit for others because the vine must always bear fruit for others. What are the ways, even in the midst of this pandemic, that you can be an active member of the local Christian community? And finally, the invitation to allow the Lord to prune what needs to be pruned, the attitudes, the dispositions, the actions that can be replaced with better ones, ones that enable us to bear even more fruit, fruit in plenty, as Jesus says today. If you really want to live an authentic Christian life, practice remaining in Him today. Notice all the consequences of doing that, because then you will bear fruit for yourself and for others. We still are in the Easter season, even though we're coming towards the end of it. And so, in place of the creed today, I'm going to invite you to simply renew the promises of your baptism. And so, brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we can walk with him in newness of life. Let us now renew the promises of our own baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now bring our needs, our prayers before the Lord. For a deeper intimacy with the Lord, that we would learn how to abide in the Lord by developing a personal and intimate relationship with Jesus through prayer, participation in our Christian community, and allowing the Lord to prune what needs pruning in our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the gift of faith, that we will depend more fully on God in every aspect of our lives and grow in confidence that God will never abandon us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For refugees and immigrants, that God will lead them to safety and help them find communities for support and opportunities to use their talents for the good of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
for all those who have been abused, for the victims of abuse in our churches and society, that they would find healing and that the perpetrators would find healing and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the fragile and sick, for those who suffer from depression, terminal illnesses, COVID-19, and all who are unwell, that they would know the healing hand of the Lord upon them and feel his peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own needs, let us spend a moment in silence. Bring our own needs before the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, help us to abide in you. And in so doing, allow us to bring our lives before you so that we may bear much fruit. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, who is our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name. For our good and good of all God's holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, 
and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile to himself all things through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine. And once more giving you thanks, he handed the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the moral of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and look forward to his blessed coming. And we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one cup, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made more fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. That we would abide in him, so that he may abide in us and we may bear fruit, let's pray as the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. I'm going to invite you to share peace with those whom you may be with at this time. If you're alone, spend a moment just praying for peace or for those whom today you would like to pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, the one whose body was broken and whose blood was shed for people like us. How happy are we who are called to share in this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. But in blood of Christ, bring all of us, our family, our friends, and all people to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let's pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.